promised I said I would come on live on YouTube. Uh, I've been doing these lives on Instagram and somebody said why don't you do them on YouTube we'd love to see you here so I've decided today's session I will come on to YouTube instead of Instagram. So what are we going to cover today? All they are, are like short sessions where we can cover one topic. Uh, ask me a question and I'll give you the answer. Uh, today's one is uh, we're sharing, well, I'm going to be the sharing the secrets to starting a successful interior design business. And this is for those of you who are just starting out as well as those of you who have been in business for a while, because um, these are questions that will continue to change and evolve as you get going in business. And I think that's probably the biggest misconception most people have is when they start, they think that everything has to be perfect. And that is a real problem because when everything, when you're trying to make everything perfect at the outset, you don't realize that it is going to change. It is going to evolve just by the nature of business and by the nature of you growing as a human being, as a business person, all of these things start to evolve and change. And because of that, uh, when, what you discover or what you create at the beginning of your business is never usually what you end up with. It, it's a process of evolution. So don't be a perfectionist about it. So that was a bonus one. <laughs> I didn't think I'd, uh, uh, that was kind of the intro, but you got a bonus anyway. So um, what are the secrets to starting a successful interior design business? The first thing you need to do is have the answer to specific questions. And the first question that you need to ask yourself is how are you going to get clients? Without knowing the answer to this, um, like you need money coming in. So um, if you don't know how you're going to be getting clients regularly or consistently, um, you're not going to be in business. So obviously most people think that I'll just go on Instagram and post their portfolio and they'll get clients. That happens to some people. Um, but it's not part of a really good strategy um, and it doesn't work for most people. It happens to the exception to the rule. It's not really the majority. It happens to some. Uh, other people think that they're just going to use adverts. I've had people come and join my program and they've been using adverts for years and still never landed a client. So this alone, again, is not potentially <laughs> the way to get clients. Um, Others uh, work on referrals. This is probably the biggest thing in architecture and interior designs. Um, you've got one client, you've got a good project, and then you keep um, from their circle of friends, keep getting more and more projects. The problem with that is, and um, most people know, that you're stuck at a at a pay rate because everyone shares the information about what they're all being, what they you've charged them, and you're kind of stuck in this little ballpark. Where initially, because they're your first project, you do it really cheap, and then you kind of it's like this this evolution of low cost projects. Even though you're giving them everything, the results are spectacular, but actually, as a designer, you're broke because you're not making any money. You're doing everything for almost for free. So um, how are you going to get clients? I always suggest a 50-50 approach. 50% of your marketing efforts need to go into social media. They need to go into longer term strategies. So things like Instagram or wherever your clients are. So they may not be on Instagram, they may be on LinkedIn, they may be on TikTok if you've got a younger crowd. Um, they may be on Facebook. Uh, they may be uh, on other people like YouTube. So knowing where your people are and then creating specific content for that that's going to work for you long term. So this is the stuff that should become easier over time. You do it once and you reap the benefits from it over and over and over again. That is 50% of your effort. The other 50% of the effort is the real short action stuff that is going to get you results straight away. And that is face-to-face -face marketing. That is getting, meeting people straight away. So that can involve networking, that can involve running workshops, it can it can be a multitude of things that are right for your ideal client, but you need to know who the ideal client is in order to um, provide a service or provide uh, or be in the place marketing um, in front of these people who are potential clients. So um, that 50-50 approach 
means that you're getting results quickly, but you're also setting yourself up for success in the future. So you're working on both because they slow, but you're not going to get instant results from social media or any online marketing. This is really slow results. Because of that, you want to start early and build on that process for a longer time. And that's what works for you longer term when things are rolling, you've got momentum, you're getting the clients because you've done the kind of face to face. And then all of a sudden this comes together and you've got a fantastic marketing system that is working for you. You're doing little bits and you're just maintaining. And that's when it becomes fun and really, because at the beginning of any business, there's this big push, you have to work harder. At the beginning of business, it is much harder because there's so much more to do. That's why it's my passion. That's why I'm, well, I created a program that focuses on that hard bit <laughs> because that's the part most people give up on because it's hard. They don't realize that actually putting in that extra effort is required at the beginning. It's normal. That's what you need to do for things to be easier. So that, like, that hard, hard bit at the beginning where you're putting in that effort and may not be seeing the results straight away which um, you need extra support to keep going because um, that's when most people give up. So how are you going to get clients? You need to know the answer to that in order to succeed. It's, I mean, it sounds obvious, but I didn't know this at the beginning, right? I didn't realize, I mean, I kind of expected that I would just start doing stuff and the clients would come, like build it and they will come. It doesn't really work like that. It has to be strategic. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know where your people are and get in front of them face to face as well as on social. So you need that 50-50 split because one's slow, one's fast, both of them work together for you to create success. Next question you need to know in order to succeed and um, start a successful interior design business is you need to know what services you're going to offer. And I know I do um, talk about this quite often. And uh, if you watch my Instagram, not all interior designers should be offering the same services. And I think, I still think this is really, really nuts that not this is not common knowledge. Most people think that you have to preserve, you have to do a consultation and e-design and a uh, full service. That is not necessary for 99.9% .9 of interior designers. Even if you offer one service, and you offer that service and you've figured out the service to be the one thing that solves your client's most pressing problem, it will be a success. So focus on one at the beginning. If you're already an interior designer who's a bit more, um, uh, who has been in business for a little bit longer, you might be ready for more. So um, that means that you might want to, to start doing, taking on bigger projects. You might be ready for full service design. Maybe even you, you might even be the, the type of designer who starts at full service. That's okay. But adding on other things, I mean, I know I do full service. I know what it's like. You have no extra time. If you're one person doing full service, you, there is no time for anything else. So offering little consultations here or other um, services is it's just going to make you overwhelmed. It'll be just too much stress. Streamline. Focus on the thing that's bringing in the money. And when you think about it, all you need, in if you are doing full service, two or three clients a year. I always say two and a half because um, uh, two is too little. You need that half. So two and a half a year. And you're like at the right fee. And that fee for everyone is different depending on what you're charging, what you need to bring in. And it's not that difficult to get two and a half clients. Like it's, it's sounds random, two and a half. So aim for three, obviously. Um, but it's, it's, it all of a sudden becomes less overwhelming. If you're doing e-design, for example, and you're just starting out, you do need more experience. You do need those smaller projects that aren't bringing in, you know, that, that full service fee. So you are going to need more and you are going to need to be 
doing the things that require a higher um, higher kind of turnover of clients. But that's okay because those smaller projects are giving you experience and giving building your confidence. They're helping you see what you like, what you don't like. They're training you. And that's spot on for designers, especially if they're just starting out. Not so much for designers who are very experienced. However, it can work for experienced designers, especially if you travel a lot. If you're somebody who is, um, and this is a big topic at the moment, those people who, you know, are like married to someone who does move around a lot. Having a location can be really, it can work against you. It means that you can't run a traditional type of business. But if you create um, a service based on your current skill set or um, and um, something that your in, interior design um, potential clients are looking for, all of a sudden this starts to become a possibility for you, which it wasn't before because everyone's saying you have to do a traditional service, which is the only way to make money as an interior designer. And that's not true. So it's one way to make a lot of money as an interior designer because obviously when somebody trusts you with the full scope, that responsibility requires a lot bigger income because um, you also need a bigger insurance <laughs> for just in case they do claim. So um, it all comes together. Uh, so what's, what have we covered? We've got um, how are you going to get clients and what services are you going to offer? Thirdly, what are you going to charge? And this, it really is, is how long is a piece of string? It is different for everybody. However, there are certain things you will think about. Um, so what are your overheads? You have a basic minimum. Everyone has a different basic minimum. And that is going to set a level. So when I first started, my level was really low. <laughs> um, and... I was a, I was cheap, but I had the skills to do a lot of work. Like I was working seven days a week, seven nights a week, and I was making uh, almost a hundred k in my first few years of well, it was seventy k, um, and that was in pounds. I had never earned that kind of money. I was working day and night, <laughs> unnecessarily so. I could have just raised my prices, and I didn't realize that. And I that's what I did over time, but. I didn't realize until probably mm, I was up around 200 clients that the clients were still going to come. <laughs> and um, then I set a level and I said, okay, well now I know I'm not freaking out that I'm not going to make my mortgage this month um, and that I'm not going to you know, pay my bills. So once you get to a certain level, you can relax a bit. But the easiest way usually is to raise your prices to the level. But I didn't know how to work that out at the beginning. I had just set a fee thinking that was a good deal and people bought it because it was a good deal. <laughs> Basically give them everything for £250, which you shouldn't do. Um, so what you're going to charge is going to vary um, depending on the services you're offering because obviously... You know, if and you obviously need to know who your clients are. If you're offering e design, you're not going to be charging 100k for e design. If you're doing full service on multi million pound um, or dollar properties or projects, all of a sudden we're starting to look at those figures. So you need to know where you sit in the market. You need to understand that and you need to understand the kind of psychology of the people buying that service. So somebody who lives in an apartment. Um, who, I mean, even renters will these days hire an interior designer, but they're not going to be spending, well, there's always the exception to the rule. Um, they're not going to be spending generally um, hundreds of thousands on um, interior design services. It's funny because the one project that came to mind is a project I did for a firm when I worked with them and they were renting, but it's London and most of the time you, you have no other option but to rent for a long, like a short term, well, it's a long lease, but it's a short-term lease of 25 years, but they spent half a million on that project and our fees were 250k for that project. But um, it was 
a pretty spectacular property and um, that is the exception to the rule. <laughs> so, but most of us will not be working on those types of projects, especially if we're um, just starting out in business. And obviously where my focus is, is those first few um, years of business because they're the hardest. Um, and that's where you question yourself. You've got to work this stuff out, but also um, tweak along the way, because that is part of what we do at the beginning is we're just refining and getting to know ourselves. Um, one of my first coaches said to me, uh, if you want to get into, if you want the best coaching, oh now I've forgotten what she said, the best coaching um, program, just start a business. And she's right because, um, that was Gina DeVee by the way, and she was, um, she's right because if you want to see your insecurities up front, <laughs> they're all over the place as soon as you start a business. Your insecurity of you're not good enough, um, you can't get on camera, you don't want to be photographed, um, your clients might not might not like you, what if you feel insecure, what if you get something wrong? All of this stuff, and I had all of this stuff myself, so I went through all of it and I understand it all. Um, but the good news is everything is figureoutable, just to quote Marie Folio. Um, it really is. There are people who have been in exactly your position and have succeeded. I was one of them. I was literally on, I think by the start of time I started my business, I was on 40K um, working for a firm that I absolutely hated and I couldn't wait to leave. I was literally in the, in the toilet crying every day and um, I would come out of the toilet and my boss would be like, <laughs> like, why have you been in the toilet for so long? It was mortifying and um, it when once I started to realise that things could change, um, they really did figure it out. And um, I mean, the good news is, is these kinds of questions are really guiding you to the answers. So start with this and um, real, like all it takes is choose one of these questions that I'm going through every day and focus on one, find the answer to each, make a decision. And the decision only needs to be for now, which is the really good thing, because um, um, it can change. Just don't change it every day. <laughs> Stick with it for, for at least three months and then evolve, because that's, um, that's when you know it's not working or something isn't working or you, can, you have data to work with. So how are you going to get clients? What services are you going to offer? What are you going to charge? And um, how are you going to make money? I know this kind of sounds obvious, but get making money from interior design services alone is really difficult. Um, it takes a lot of your energy, a lot of your effort. So it makes sense to earn money in different ways as well. However, if you're just starting out, it makes sense to only make money with services because you don't want to overcomplicate things. You want to really understand what it is that you're good at, you want to get confidence, you want to grow your portfolio, you want to start working with the clients that really make sense to you. So if you are just starting out, make money with services, learn how to do that and master it. But if you've been in business for a long time, that starts to wear you down. You know, after working with hundreds and hundreds of clients, I stopped doing e-design because I was exhausted. Um, and there's only so much people are going to pay for e-design, right? because you need to understand that there's only, uh, that market is only going to pay so much that no one's going to pay you hundred K for an e-design. They're just not. So if you want to work on two or three projects a year, that's not an e-design kind of style business. Um, so how would you make money? I always suggest if you're starting out, make it with services, make your services profitable. If you've been in business for a while, you're already rolling, right? So you've made your services profitable. You just want to step back a little bit, have a little bit more extra time, a little bit more money because you've kind of reached your limit. Some people don't want to hire a team of five or 10. They just want to be a solopreneur and that is absolutely okay. I'm one of those people at the moment because I have a two-year-old that I want to spend all of my time with <laughs> and that's okay. My business can do that it's flexible enough and I've stepped back from certain types of projects for now, but it doesn't mean it's forever. Most interior designers will need, they'll come to a point where they will want to make more money 
and they will want some other passive type of income where they don't want to expend so much more energy because the services still take up a lot of time. I think this is kind of the thing no one tells you about interior design. It It is hugely rewarding, but it is a lot of work, right? So if you even if you're running two or three, two and a half projects a year, full service, that is a full time job for a year. It's not like you can do that faster. You could hire people, outsource part of it. But most of us, if we're doing this on our own, there's only so much we can do. And it is tiring. It's constant work, constant thinking about your project. So if you are at the level where you're earning the figure that you want with your services and you're happy with your project, but you just want a little bit more, but you also want just to make life a little bit easier because you know you're not going to be doing that level of intense work for the rest of your life, especially if you're in, including styling because that's very um, uh, hands-on, intense kind of work that you do um, uh, on site. Um, they're going to want uh, to think about a passive income product and start um, developing that alongside their business. Obviously, that is something we do teach as part of our advanced modules in um, our mentorship because that is something that probably because we usually get a 50-50% split of beginners or well, absolute beginners and then um, experienced designers who join it. And the beginners, I usually say, start thinking about it now. But the more experienced designers, they're usually ready to start bringing in or selling something else that starts to bring an additional income in through the door to just make your life a little bit easier, knowing that you've got this regular income that is just making life a little bit easier. So how are you going to get clients? What services are you going to offer? What are you going to charge? How are you going to make money? And finally, um, how are you going to present your information? I think this is something that gets overlooked by a lot of designers because it really is different for everybody in the sense that you have different skills, different branding and a different level of delivery. What does that mean? It means that you may be a concept kind of person. So you may only be delivering, for example, if you're uh, an e-design type of interior designer, concept may only be your thing, but how are you delivering that concept that is a su successful um, product or service to your client? Because presenting a mood board for an e-design is not enough, unless you want to be earning a hundred pounds for that mood board, because that's, or dollars, because that's what people will charge for it. Um, and that's not a lot of money. You're going to be trying to get hundreds and hundreds of clients um, to fulfill the requirements that you need every month in order to, um, earn that the kind of money that you need to survive um and the most people and you'll see this most people who charge a hundred dollars for anything interior design related are kids working from home um they don't need to bring in money they're being supported by someone else people who are being supported by their spouses and they they don't have to make money they think this is a hobby so if you want to be a profitable designer and actually make money um, you need to know that, you know, selling a hundred dollar services is not going to cut it. Um, so how are you presenting that information to make money? Because what I used to do, I was selling my e-design services that were 3000 pounds. So that's about three thousand, three and a half K. Okay? Um, and that was about two days work. That was a really profitable business for me. By the end, I just got bored <laughs> because you just come to a point, you've done hundreds and hundreds of these and it just, you, you get to the end and you're like, it's time for a change. That's when I started mentoring. Um, so what you present is directly related to the amount that you can charge, what, um, oh, and how much money you're going to make. So. I think one, many people overlook that the deliverables um, are a part of this because you can't even provide a full service without tender documentation. So that's bidding in the U US 
or um, de detailed design. How do you create bespoke per furniture without a detailed design set or technical information? So you need to understand packages of information, how they're delivered legally, because these become contract documents, and what part they play in your services. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Without wagging the finger, because I know I get intense. So um, hopefully this gives you a really clear direction, because that was the intention. What is the secret to starting a successful interior design business? You need to know the answer to these questions. How are you going to get, get clients? What services are you going to offer? What are you going to charge? How are you going to make money? And what are you going to present? And how are you going to present your information? If you want some action uh, steps, download our business plan. If you go to our website, idbs.online, at the top of the free resources section, the first um, one down is the business plan. Go and check that out. You can download it and it'll give you a workbook to work through with some extra videos to help you um, get the answers. That you